this is part two of uh, a series I'm doing called Women on the Front Lines. What does it take to be a woman on the front lines? What does it take uh, to be a leader in God's kingdom? Uh, does, is God bringing reformation to his church? All those things uh, you'll be hearing about, yes, he is bringing reformation to his church. Yes, I'm a true apostle. Yes, I'm an ordained pastor. Kiyombala kishinere kieka, kiyombala kishinere kieka, koyomba kishinere kieka. My name is Apostle Julie. Kiyombala kishinere kieka, koyomba kishinere kieka, koyomba kishinere kieka, koyomba kishinere kieka, koyombala kishinere kieka. I encourage you to seek God and seek out Him privately to find out what your gifts and callings are. Lokomba kishinere kieka, 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 koyomba kishinere kieka. In part one, I, I ended up reading some, was reading some scriptures, and I'll continue in the scriptures to uh, who we are in Christ. Um, I am a general in God's kingdom. And o lokomba kishinere kieka, koyomba kishinere kieka. And I pray in tongues. I'm an apostle, and tongues are for today. And we're going to destroy the devil's teachings and the devil's uh, um camp by saying the truth and speaking the truth in love. Read your holy Bible. Grow in the gifts of God. Grow in, grow in, in spiritual things. The last time I won, got a hit by a woman, I was attacked four times, I think two weeks ago, of my character, damage to my character, uh, publicly on, on uh, public venues, um, saying that I'm a false teacher. But if I'm reading the Word of God, there, there is truth to it. And you have to believe the Word of God. So if you're going to find your information, you find it from the Holy Bible. And don't, don't attack my character or anyone else's. God had told me, told that the person, the woman that did that recently, a man recently did it, but in the last two weeks I had four attacks. The last one was a man, the one right before that was a female. So he told that female that she needed to go grow spiritually. The Holy Spirit had me write that to her, that she needed to grow spiritually. So if you need to grow spiritually, God wants to transform your mind to give you more understanding of who God is and who God is not, who I am and who, who you are and who we are not. If you are a Christian, if you are born again, baptized, healed and delivered, then you should be on fire for Jesus Christ our Lord. And if you're not, I ask that you return and seek the heart of the Father so you can return to your first love, who first loved you. We can only love because God first loved us. So I'm doing my part and as one of the most important things for me to teach you is about prayer, seeking God, seeking God so you know exactly who you are and what you were called to do. As a woman on the front lines in the Twin Cities, I, I um, do this as a hobby for the Lord. I teach and impart, and I'm a retired construction worker. As um, I was uh, using scriptures before, I'm going to go ahead and just read through some of the scriptures on something that I prepared for uh, our ministry we, we talk about once in a while. We are intercessors. Romans 8.27 says, And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. One thing I learned early in my walk was to pray in God's will. It, it helped me, gave me an understanding, and as I grew in the things of God, the Holy Spirit taught me, I, I picked that up. And when I pray, sometimes I pray prayers, and I always say, almost always try to say, God, if I have prayed something that is out of line with your perfect will, I ask that you realign it with your perfect will. So generally when you hear me pray, you'll be hearing scriptures, scripture after, after scripture, because I pray the scriptures. Um, so um, there should be no um, uh, attacks against my character that um, that is a place for other people that need, other people need to grow. Not me. I know who I am in Christ. I'm Apostle Julie Hardigan, an ordained pastor. I'm one of the generals in the Twin Cities. Koyombala kishinere kieka. I pray in tongues. And I have more than one, one prayer language. Koshi te kasi te kasi de nere de nere. Koshi te kasi te kasi de nere de nere. Koshi te kasi te kasi de nere. I do this because Jesus set me free. I do all this for Jesus. I do this to win people uh, to Christ so they don't perish for all eternity. And yes, I'm going to read you some scriptures just as I ended with part one. We are kingdom builders, winning the lost to Christ, baptizing believers, praying for the sick, and setting the captives free. Proverbs 11.30, the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. My Bible is actually open to that. Uh, this is a King James Bible. Actually, it's a Benny Hinn King James Bible. I was a... Uh, 
uh, a personal assistant of a pastor who is now in heaven. Uh, when I went to a Benny Hinn uh, pastor's conference, I was her personal assistant, and uh, uh, I bought this Bible um, at his at one of his uh, events. So I do have uh, this Bible open to uh, Proverbs 11:30. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. It's not about Benny Hinn or this Bible. It's about who God is. It's not about whether uh, I've made mistakes or, or anyone else has made mistakes. It's because God can restore, and he understands when we make mistakes. One of the things he told me after he asked me to use the title of apostle on February 23rd, 2011, I'm not sure how many days or weeks later, but he said, it's okay for you to make mistakes. So if I make mistakes, it's not of intentional. Intentional sin grieves God's heart. Um, and there's many people walking in uh, intentional sin. And in part one, I was talking about some of that. I'm not sure where the Holy Spirit is going. I'm flying off the seat of my pants for this, this second thing because God rearranged my schedule to, to preach uh, the women on the front lines um, as he would have it. Um, I'm using the, this Bible again on Proverbs 11:30 says, the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. I believe that's what scripture I'm reading off. I actually did the work uh, of these prayer points uh, myself, so it's probably out of the King James Version as well as I'm reading these. Mark 1, 8, I indeed have baptized you with water, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. James 5, 14. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Luke 4.18, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. Are the devils fleeing? If you're getting a little bit upset at my praying in tongues, it's because you probably need to... Uh, either be delivered from uh, an unclean mindset or some unclean things inside. Um, it's a demonstration of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit lives inside of me. When Jesus died on the cross, God raised him up. After three days, he uh, was raised up. And he's alive. He's in heaven. When he went to heaven, he sent us the Holy Spirit. When we become born again, we have the Holy Spirit. You can have the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You can have pray in tongues. If um, you don't have a pastor that believes in it or you are a pastor that wants it, recently I prayed for some Baptist, path, uh, Baptist church people that um, wanted to be able to pray in tongues, and that's revival. Um, I just thank you uh, for listening. Some Baptist churches, one Baptist church told me that my gifts weren't welcome. They didn't tell me that like that. They told me that uh, they don't believe in apostles and tongues. Um, and I said, where are my gifts welcome? And they pointed to the different churches. So they really do believe uh, that uh, they are gifts from the God. They just didn't have their eyes open. So as I'm able to pray on Easter Sunday, I prayed for some Baptist church people and they asked for the, uh, to be able to pray in tongues. So that is a revival in itself. My grandmother uh, was a Baptist church member uh, for 78 years, the longest standing Baptist church member in uh, uh, First Baptist Church in Wheaton, Illinois. As I'm a radical nation changer, I don't come against any uh, denomination. I talk to all tongues and all tribes. I'm an all-denominational uh, person. I, I, don't, uh, I include everybody if they want to learn more about God. Uh, I will uh, bring correction if they come against me uh, in, in negative ways. Just as in Isaiah 61, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. 
Part of the strategies God gives us is when we read the Word of God, what, he, what we can use, and when He gives it to us to know who we are in Christ, we can possess the land for God. We can take back America for God's glory where the devil has taken and, and uh, destroyed much of God's plan. And, and in, in a harvest, we can bring into place reformation to God's church where people will have the full understanding of who God really is. So many pastors don't uh, limit uh, God. They put him in a box and they refuse uh, the apostles that he, and prophets that, they, that he sends them. But God is watching. God doesn't let them get away with it. Um, but as a possessor of the land for Christ, I stand on these scriptures. Deuteronomy 11.24, Joshua 1.3, 1 Chronicles 4.17, Daniel 7.14, these are some of the ones that I'm going to read. And 2 Chronicles 7:14 says, If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land. I do not want the Twin Cities, Minneapolis and St. Paul, to be a Sodom and Gomorrah. I do not want the people in the Twin Cities to be an Ananias and Sapphira who died when they lied to an apostle, Apostle Peter. They lied to the Holy Spirit and Apostle Peter. There's a lot of dishonesty in the body of Christ. There's a lot of dysfunction in the church. So if you've been wounded by the church, know that God is pure and holy and man is not always pure and holy. Man makes mistakes. And it's okay if you make mistakes, but if you've if you made a mistake and you need to repent from it, I just uh, ask God for the ways to do that. He's a lo loving God, a loving Father, and we can go forward uh, with what He has to, us to do after He restores those things to you. In Deuteronomy 11.24, as a possessor of, of the land in the Twin Cities and in America, I take authority over the land as an intercessor, as, a, as an apostle. I preach the full gospel. I preach the fire of the Lord um, which the Holy Spirit in you made just right now I'm changing my thoughts a little bit I think the Holy Spirit wants me to talk about the chaff being burned out if you feel burning going on in your bodies God is burning out the chaff if you have the Holy Spirit in you I'm going back to read the uh, scriptures for possessing the land for Christ. Deuteronomy 11:24. Every place where on the soles of your feet shall tread shall be yours. From the wilderness in Lebanon, from the river and the river Euphrates, even unto the uttermost sea shall your coast be. I take authority in America. God doesn't have to bring another apostle to America uh, to... Uh, uh, Take the land for him. The apostles in America should be taking the land for God's kingdom. As, we, as he invites apostles into America, we receive them and the words and the gifts that they have for us. We are to be a light in, a, in the world. America is to be a light in a word. We're supposed to shine bright for God's glory, and we need to take the land for God's glory. Joshua 1.3, Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon that I have given unto you, as I said unto Moses. First Chronicles 4.10 And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, O oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed, and enlarge my coast, and that thine hand might be with me, and that thou wouldest keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested. Daniel 7.14 And there was given to him dominion and glory and kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is ev an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. As an apostle, God calls people that he can trust to lead his people. Um, I'm honored with that. I'm humbled by that. There's two ways to look at humbling. One, and God would say uh, he's humbling you, but 
sometimes it's there's two ways to look at it as maybe being prideful but also as being lifted up so um, when I've been humbled by God asking me to use the title of apostle and one of the things I think that is really important for you to know is is um, as a female apostle he's given me revelations just like he's given men new revelations of his word different teachings that uh, the religious church has been stuck on different places where people have been stuck on that release people into their destinies for example I wasn't planning on talking about this but uh, in Esther Esther married a divorced man and it's okay if you've been divorced and God has freed you up to marry someone else um, by the book of Esther Esther married a divorced man who had all kinds of issues. He drank, he didn't see his wife for weeks at a time. Uh, he divorced Queen Vashti or uh, got rid of her by the, what other people around him were saying. And we never hear of Queen Vashti again. But I do remember somewhere, I haven't read this in a, in a, a while, but uh, I remember in Queen Vashti, she had a feast for the servants. So, the you know, to understand really who God is in all this. Um, I really give the credit to Mordecai, not Esther or not, not uh, King Ahasuerus, but King Ahasuerus and uh, uh, Esther went on to do some great things. I want all people to live and not die and live and declare God's glory on this earth. I want all people, the Jews and the Gentiles, to, to understand that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. And he is the authority. He is my authority. And I submit to Jesus. But I also have a multitude of counselors that I submit to. This is the main authority that, that uh, I use in the King James uh, Version of the Holy Bible. Lokomba kishinere kieka, koyomba kishinere kieka, koyomba kishinere kieka, kieka kieka kieka, lokomba kishinere kieka. I know that when I'm on the street witnessing to people, no matter where, what city I'm at um, or what nation, I talk to people about Jesus. I can't run from the devil's tactics to try to bring fear. I have to face them right on. And a lot of the devil's tactics come through God's people that are born again that should know better. There is a hard word, world out there that needs uh, to know Jesus. And one at a time, God allows me to minister uh, to people with a gospel track and bring people into the kingdom that way. If they enter into God's house and they see the junk that I see, uh, wow, woe to those who are leading that are not preaching the truth. Woe to those who are leading that are not preaching the truth. Woe to those who are leading and are not preaching the truth. You must be held accountable. God will judge the living and the dead. And he places some of us apostles in the land to bring correction. And what I'm going to read next is really cool. We are carriers of his presence. I know at least when I'm witnessing on the street, the love of God sometimes flows to me and through me. I've had a uh, request to be, uh, I'm single and I've had a request, at least one request to, uh, from a person several times to marry him because he just really felt the love of God. Um, unfortunately, he was on 22 medications, 22 pills a day, um, and he needs to be set free. So what I do is I've, I uh, uh, try to help people get off uh, prescription drugs as well but people are not putting into their bodies what they should be and they're putting into their bodies sometimes what they shouldn't be they're smoking and drinking and doing drugs and they are um, not putting the vegetables in their bodies that their bodies need I'm not perfect at it by any means but when I was called as an apostle I was already overweight God asked me to use the title of apostle and I've been persecuted and judged because I'm I'm heavy um, by several people and God opens my ears and shows me in different ways uh, even in writing uh, I've been uh, mocked because I'm have, uh, heavy as an apostle I like who I am it doesn't matter what you think it's what God thinks so I'm reading to you unless you think good on who I am really in Christ then then it, that matters but what God says of me um, is what I stand on and believe I am a carrier of his presence John 7:38. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. How does that happen? When I talk about the love, people feel the love, 
you know, because I've been refined and persecuted and God raises me up and heals me, I suffered. And many people, I, I judge people and are critical. You have no business if you're critical and judging people when they're doing the work of God. If you can't do what they're doing, then, then just keep your mouth shut. Koyumbala kishinere kieka, kilaka, 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 koyumba kishinere kieka. If you don't like the words of my anointed, my anointed words, maybe they're not anointed, but God has placed me in as an apostle. He's chosen me and he told me it's okay for you to me to make mistakes. So if you're not going to be one of my friends and you're going to be an enemy, you could be an enemy of God's because he's called me and chosen me. And I'm going to do what he's called me to do, whether you like me or not. I am a carrier of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That is my focus. Evangelism is my focus. To win the lost to Christ, get them born again, baptized, healed, and delivered. And I've baptized in uh, swimming pools, whirlpools, water bottle baptism on the street, a lake, uh, lakes, um, the, uh, anything else, Holy Spirit. Koyomba la kishinere kieka, koyomba kishinere kieka, lokomba in swimming pools, uh, spas, whirlpools. Local what, uh, hospital beds just uh, assisted. I allowed uh, uh, one of my friends to baptize her brother. I walked her through that in the hospital. So I, I'm, I'm getting a lot of opportunities from God, and, and I just go one day at a time. As a carrier of God, carrier of the gospel of Jesus Christ, Romans 1.16 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation, to everyone that believeth, to first, to the Jew first, and also the Greek. Again, Romans 1, 16 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. And one more time, I will read Romans 1, 16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, or it's, it says of Christ, and one more time, I will say, Romans 1, 16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. Romans 1, 16, again, says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, and I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Lokomba kishinere kieka, kiyomba kishinere kieka, koyomba kishinere kia, lehi kaiyomala kia, kaiyama kishinere kia, koyomba kishinere kieka. I think the Lord is changing my direction. He wants me to talk to you about something Jesus has done for me. Jesus is really cool, and I've had some really cool blessings from God. Uh, I'm all about Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and no man should go unto the Father, Father God, but through Jesus Christ. Koyomba la kishinere kieka, koyomba kishinere kieka, lokomba kishinere kieka, 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 kieka. Allah and Jehovah are not the same God. The God that created you is Jehovah, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi El Shaddai, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, Lamb of God, Prince of Peace, the Great I Am. Jesus is, Christ is my Lord and Savior. Jesus um, is the truth and the way unto to heaven for all eternity. The eternal love, joy, and peace is out of this world. And I, I did have a demonstration that I spoke to you about in part one, I believe, about um, God, the eternal love, joy, and peace being filled with that from heaven. I'm not quite sure if I told you the whole testimony about that, uh, but I did have a visitation from the Lord, and the eternal love, joy, and peace is out of this world, and it's all worth it. Um, let, don't let the things of the world get you down, as even the Lord is speaking that to me right now. Um, that the, his people are, are being corrected, whether I see it or not. He's, he's bringing the correction of, as, as uh, just two of us apostles, apostles just walked through some tough correction in the singles in the Twin Cities, and I was rejected and kicked out of a place. I, don't, I can sit and recover from, from those, those, uh, the battle. Um, one of the things that God wanted me to talk to you about is one of the special things God did for me. Just now that I understand who I am in Christ, I can do a better job as what, he, at what he's called me to do. But now I'm going to just give you a testimony of when I was in a church uh, many years ago, I think it was 1988, and I went to a pastor's, um, she was getting licensed under a, a particular a ministry in town, 
and I went to uh, an evening service after that licensing because it was close to my house and I wanted to go to a Sunday night service and it wasn't my normal church. But there was a couple talking about abortion healing uh, ministry that they had, which they no longer have, and other people have the Christ-centered abortion healing classes. But that couple was talking about abortion healing class, and the Holy Spirit spoke these words to me, and I'll never re re regret it, the decision I made, and I will never forget what he spoke to me. He spoke to me and said, if you take that class that they're talking about, I will heal, heal you. They were talking about their post-abortion trauma healing class. And I heard that. There was nobody else that spoke to me. I heard that in my head. And God spoke to me that. So I thought, well, I have pain in my body. Well, I will go take the classes. I didn't know what was wrong with me. And, but I just was obedient. The Spirit of God just led me. And I signed up for the class. And I went six weeks in a row, one night a week, for the class. And after I finished the classes, I knelt down at my bed. And I said a prayer that I'll never forget, so I know it was the Holy Spirit. God, if there's anything going on in my body that's not of you, please heal me yourself. And I got crawled up into bed, and I laid down with my right arm extended. And I think I was sleeping with my left hand this way, and my right arm was extended in a king-size bed by myself. And the Holy Spirit, or uh, the, Jesus came into the room, held my hand, and my hand panicked. It went open. And then it naturally, I, I kind of got scared, and then he put me in a sedated state, and my hand naturally clasped around his. And he sent his power through my right arm and in through my breasts. And it took me two years to be able to talk about that testimony. I had a confirmation a uh, little bit after that. I went to a healing meeting in Florida, and I said, God, I had pain in my body, and I was in a long line waiting to get prayed for. And then when it was my turn to get up on stage, as I walked up on stage, the pastor said, God's healing you of cancer right now. That was a, what God did for me. He did something very special for me. He supernaturally healed me of undiagnosed breast cancer that was linked to the abortion that I had. But in the two years that I couldn't talk about it, he transformed my mind showing me the studies of abort the link between abortion and breast cancer. Uh, there is a website, I believe uh, the uh, founder of that has gone to heaven. Uh, she's, uh, um, I believe she's passed away, but abortionbreastcancer.com uh, is where I got much of the information uh, and, I, and God transformed my mind to understand uh, what actually he was doing. So the reason there's a lot of breast cancer in America and in, in, in the world is because of uh, the link between uh, abortion and some breast cancers. Um, God wanted me to be able to deliver that message, uh, not condemn anyone, but just to seek the heart of the Father and, and uh, uh, know that not to go down the road of abortion, not to go into an abortion clinic, that he just does not approve of that. And there's reasons why um, he's healed me. I believe there's been several times where I could have almost died, but God has restored me. So my, that's a great gift that I, I received from the Lord, and that's the supernatural. God has done some supernatural things in me, and, and I've seen him do supernatural things in other people when I pray for him. I've gotten testimonies back, people's knees, backs healed, and right on the spot they're healed, and I've gotten uh, emails. I didn't even remember, that, but one woman said, you proclaimed healing to whatever was going on in my breast area, and you didn't know that I had a lump in my breast, but the doctors can't find it. So as God does these miracles, He is the healer, just as He reminded me as I walked before I was on my way to the healing meeting in Florida, where I got the confirmation about the healing of, of cancer that I didn't even know that I had. Uh, God on my way there, God spoke to me the word saying, just remember I'm the healer. So God is the healer. Jesus Christ, by his stripes we are healed. Um, you can seek God if you need healing in your body. You can also pray that prayer. God, if there's anything going on in my body that's not of you, please heal me yourself. God is the healer. I'm a retired construction worker. I'm a general in God's kingdom. You probably heard that if you've listened to the part one before. And I'm doing the work of the Lord. I don't take one penny from the ministry so far. I'm the 
main, main support because God has given me some tough messages to deliver. There, I don't have a lot of ministry supporters, um, but God has given me the platforms to build and I'll do what I'm called to do as long as I'm here on the earth and as long as he allows me to breathe the air that he's given us to breathe. He is the creator. He is the creator of the trees, uh, the, the clouds, the light, the air that we breathe, the water that we drink. And he's the purifier. Some things we have to depend on God and I ask God to purify things that we as humans can't do that. But he also purifies us. He purges us and prunes us to purify his work in us. Because his word says that he brings to completion the things that he does. So as I go forward with what he's asked me to do, uh, making discipleship manuals and Bible study and books, nonprofit Bibles, uh, studies and Bible study and books for Bible study and books nonprofit. I'm doing the best I can as a hobby to uh, put those things together. And we're editing uh, our recovery book called 12 Steps and Beyond for Recovery. One thing I noticed when we started the recovery gro group is, is that uh, the first group was like six out of 10 people and had issues with suicidal thoughts. So I've added that to that, uh, we, I had that in another book, another discipleship manual, but I added that to the recovery book because uh, it's called 12 Steps and the 12 Steps of and Beyond for Recovery. I added that because it's so important for people to know the complications between uh, some medications and having an unclean spirit and not being able to break free. It's really painful to break free from medications, to break free from all the things we've put in our bodies that shouldn't have been there, the drugs, the alcohol, the, the food. I know I've had bad diets myself. Uh, so to break free from that unclean spirit, we do some fasting and praying. I talked to you, started about talking about intercession, but I, I got it off a little bit. Maybe that was by the Holy Spirit. I'm not quite sure. But we are loved by God. John 3, 3 we, but we are loved by God, and we are God's love to the world. John 13, 35, by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have loved one to another. John 13, 35 again says, by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. We are friends of God, the Father, His Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Kiyombala kishinere kieka, kiyombala kishinere kieka, lokomba kishinere kieka, kieka. God gives us spiritual gifts as His children. He wants you to know that He gives out spiritual gifts, and His Word says that it's His desire, it's he gives, it's, he, we should have a desire to desire the best gifts. And by having the prayer languages and the tongues, sometimes we're praying for somebody in another part of the world that we don't even know. And sometimes he's giving us business ideas and strategies to write down uh, by the Holy Spirit. Or sometimes it's just um, to worship God and, and, and spirit and in truth. James 2.23 says, And the scripture was fulfilled which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. So we are friends of God when we are born again, baptized, healed, and delivered. And I talked uh, about in part one and in this section al session already as well about Micah 6, 8. Obedience to God is one of the uh, ways we can stay humble before the Lord. We have to do what God asks us to do whether we like it or not, but generally he gives you the grace to do that. And he gives out these uh, requests from him. And if we're going to do what he's asked us to do, that's one way we can stay uh, humble. To walk in humility uh, is to be obedient to God. As I'm just ministering right now to you, that, those are some of the sayings God gives me for writing. So I'm just going to minister to what the Lord, he changed my saying a little bit uh, to, to uh, refine it a little bit. He, he, he just said to walk in humility is to be obedient to God. Now what you see me doing is ministering to my friends and family on one of my Facebook pages. 
not everybody likes it when I, I minister because sometimes I'm bringing correction and sometimes they don't approve. Uh, sometimes they don't like um, uh, who I am or who I've become. Uh, but most of them, most of my family still love me and tolerate that. They're also being transformed. So whether you're in a baby Christian place where you're not born again uh, or whether you're a mature Christian, you know, each person has a gift inside of them, a beautiful gift that God has given. Each person is very valuable to God. And as a woman on the front lines, to be able to go to the street and encourage people uh, to, to understand that God hasn't brought all these difficult situations into their life, but we can be more than conquerors, but that God is pure and holy and wants the best for them. Sometimes situations happen that we have to overcome, but he doesn't bring every battle uh, to us. Uh, but as, as you overcome some of these things, you get keys from God and spiritual gifts. There's a lot of things God does that you don't see. A lot of the things in the spirit realm that I've seen it because I'm a seer, I see spiritual keys and I see uh, door, doors open, dreams and visions and open visions. Sometimes I see, a, uh, I prayed for a man one time, I had my hand. Just I, People wouldn't look at that as a divine appointment, but I, I, I did because afterward God showed me that uh, and confirmed it. He gave me a, a gold key in my hand after I prayed for me. I knew it had to do with praying for a, a, a janitor of a church that I had, had gone to. So I, I don't do anything for money. I talk to people about Jesus because I love God and I can only love God because he first loved me. And Micah 6, 8 again is, He that he has showed thee, O man, what is good and what does the Lord require of thee, but to do justly and love mercy, to walk humbly with thy God. As I am an intercessor, I pray in the Spirit. So I think I talked to you earlier about being a watchman, praying in tongues. Sometimes God uh, uh, does things and just to strengthen my spirit, man, but he also does things that he wants to do. I've asked him to change my mind to line up with his word, his will, and his ways. So sometimes he does things that I, I don't plan. Sometimes I'm headed in one direction and he changed my mind to go to a different direction. But I've given him the permission to, that, to do that. The Holy Spirit lives inside of me and it's only by Jesus dying and, and going to heaven that he could send us the Holy Spirit. I am born again, baptized, healed, and delivered a true apostle for God and teaching you some of the things that you might not have heard before. But as an intercessor, we are in the Northern Gate. We had, I had the opportunity as a leader to go to a, a prayer meeting uh, just in the last couple of weeks. Uh, and an apostle was brought here from Uganda. And God had showed him in America the gates, of have, the, the gates in America, the four gates in America, where we could stand as intercessors to pray in those gates and we could take the territory back. As I talked to you about the scriptures about taking the territory, I stand in America in the northern gate right now. And as I pray these, the prayers that we pray for, we want righteousness back into our schools, righteousness back into the, uh, into the uh, marketplace, righteousness into our homes. Uh, as as uh, we as intercessors are praying in the northern gate, Minneapolis, St. Paul, this is one of the gates that uh, God showed, uh, I believe is Apostle uh, Philip Charles, uh, came and uh, spoke, and he's, he, he demonstrated, he, he showed us and told us the gate, different gates of, in America. So as I, I come against any evil, wicked agendas that, um, that have tried to take the territory in America and tried to take the territory in the Twin Cities. God hears our prayers. And this, this session I will be uh, praying through some of these prayers. And this is Women on the Front Lines. Uh, this is a, a series of shows that uh, I am doing because I am one of the strongest women that I can see on the land getting beat up by God's people just because I love God and trying to win the loss to the Lord and doing what the Holy Spirit has asked me to do. I do not know anyone else suffering like I've had to suffer with king, kingdom mindsets. Um, and I, maybe I don't know enough people but everyone else that I see is gathered together. They'll they'll go away from me because they they think um, there's uh, I don't I'm I'm not liked as well, or they can they can have better uh, place, placements so they they leave my platform because they don't think other people like me. But I know I have a God that loves me. I know that I have a God that hears my prayers. And even if I'm the only one praying these prayers, even in the silence, I know God hears my prayers. So that's all that really matters to me. If you love me. Thank you. If you don't, it's okay. 
Koyumbala Kishinede Kie. I have a God that loves me, a God that created me, and He told me one day He created me that He so that He would have someone to love. I love all people. I witness to all people, all tongues, all tribes, and all denominations, bringing the truth as apostles are for today, and I will preach the truth in love to you right out of the Holy Bible. As I'm praying in tongues, I believe I'm just worshiping the Father and, and Spirit and truth and just doing His will. Um, and the Word of God says, Enter into His gates with thanksgiving and into His courts with praise. Be thankful unto Him and bless His name. Psalm 100, verse 4. This is uh, one of my intercessors prayer points that I have prepared after that meeting that I saw that there was a special need for just standing in the northern gate. First I will go through the gates that he shared with us. Uh, just really a privilege and an honor to be in that meeting. Uh, um, and it was uh, in Bloomington at Jesus' Lord Church. So I just uh, thank you for listening and for doing your part in the kingdom if you're already doing your work. I just thank you for the intercession. I can even f feel some of the prayers of the saints right now uh, that are praying for me. I just uh, posted that event and uh, uh, being able to uh, uh, say that I, I told, told some of my friends that I had just finished part one. And I can feel some of my friends uh, uh, praying for me. One is an intercessor out of Texas. I can just feel her anointing right now. And I'm just demonstrating to you the power of our words and the, the placement of, of how I minister to different people and the platforms, I use everything that God has given me to bring the lost in, to be born again, baptized, healed, and delivered. There are people on my Facebook page that do not know Jesus yet, probably, and some that are not living right if they do know Him. So as, as I see the transformation of even my friends and family, um, they're in tough places and they will perish if they don't uh, get transformed. So as I stand in the gap for all people, I just have to trust God with my friends and family that uh, uh, that they will come into their full uh, knowledge of Jesus Christ and be born again, baptized, healed, and delivered, just as I seek that for your families. Let me just start over with the intercessor prayer points. I prepared these myself uh, after a meeting from uh, at Jesus' Lord Church where they uh, honored us by bringing in Apostle Philip Charo, I believe his name was. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him. Bless his name. That's Psalm 100, verse 4. Praise and thank God. As a woman on the front lines, God, I ask you uh, in Jesus' name all these prayers. Heavenly Father, Lord, hear our prayers. We pray that the wickedness will not stand in the land. We pray that the gates of hell will not prevail against the kingdom of God. We ask that you tear down the walls which prevent revival in America. We ask that you tear down the walls which prevent revival in all nations. God, we pray for people to repent from wickedness, forsaking God, burning incense to other gods, and for worshiping other gods. God, we ask that you raise up intercessors to stand in the gap. We ask that you increase your spirit of intercession for revival. And I know that I said that I would give you these before, uh, but I didn't. I'm going to give you them now. We ask that you raise up intercessors for the Northern Gate, Minneapolis, and St. Paul. The gates are uh, the Northern Gate, Minneapolis, St. Paul. The Southern Gate, New Orleans, Louisiana. Eastern Gate, Virginia Beach, Virginia and Western Gate, San Francisco, California. And the evil has moved in in those areas. I stand in the gap as, as in part one I shared, I believe I shared with you the word that God has spoke to me. The reason that corruption is in America is because the apostolic covering is not holy. As God has brought some of us uh, into the land, I myself have walked, given Lord a purity commitment, and I've been walking in purity for 18 years, receiving blessings from God. Uh, uh, an angel came and pulled a sheet up supernaturally in uh, my bed one morning at 6 a.m. I think that was uh, June 9th, uh, 2011, and supernaturally put a purity ring on my face. God, we ask that you increase your spirit of intercession for a revival. We ask that you raise up intercessors for the Northern Gate, Minneapolis, Minnesota. We ask that you raise up intercessors for the Southern Gate, New Orleans, Louisiana. We ask that you raise up intercessors for the Eastern Gate, Virginia Beach, Virginia. God, we ask that you raise up intercessors for the Western Gate, San Francisco, California. We ask that you raise up intercessors for the Northern Gate from Minnesota, from Wisconsin, Iowa, Northern, North Dakota, and South Dakota. As an apostle in America, 
an apostle across the world. I'm praying these for all the gates. I'm praying these scriptures for all the gates, and I'm standing, I'm sitting in the northern gate of Minneapolis, St. Paul. Kiyombala, kishinere, kiaka, kiaka, yomba, kiyomba, kia, 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 layama, kishinere, kiaka. We ask that you raise up intercessors for the northern gate from Minnesota, from Wisconsin, Iowa, North Dakota, and South Dakota. God, we ask that you give your people strategic plans for building up the kingdom of God. God, we ask that you set America and all nations free from demonic territorial spirits. God, we ask that you uproot everything that you have not planted. God, we ask that you purchase America and the nations from sin and dead works. God, we ask that you pull down the strongholds of crime, satanic activity, witchcraft, sorcery, divination, abortion, occultism, false teaching, greed, lust, whoremongering, prostitution, perversion, murder, adultery, fornication, homosexuality, gossip, slander, false accusations, dishonesty, suicide, and suicidal thoughts, evil works, and evil agendas. God, we ask that we bind, God, we bind the strong man, evil powers, principalities, and rulers of darkness. God, I ask that you uproot everything you haven't planted. Uproot everything you have not planted in the Twin Cities and uproot everything you have not planted in America. God, I pray for a holy uh, revival in America that we win the loss for Christ and that we turn this nation for your glory. God, I ask that you turn this nation for your glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Do what it takes, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. God, we ask that you destroy the plans of the enemy. We ask that you take down the giants and, and the in the region who prevail, prevent revival. We ask you take down the giants in the region who prevent revival. We pray for spiritual strength and physical strength for kingdom of God leaders. We pray that you increase your fire and eliminate lukewarmness in your church. We pray for healing miracles, signs and wonders. We pray for miracle organ healings. We pray for creative miracles. We pray for medical miracles. We pray for marketplace miracles. We ask God that you raise up laborers for evangelism. Koyombala kishinere kieka, koyombala kishinere kieka, kileka kileka kileka, lokomba kishinere kieka, kieka kieka kieka. God, we ask that you prepare the hearts of people who are not yet born again to be able to receive their salvation. God, we ask that you help people not to tarry from their salvation. God, we pray for divine intervention in anything going on in our lives that's not of you. God, we pray that you release your anointing for every man, woman, and child to overcome difficult circumstances, and we cover them with prayer and with the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray that you destroy the idols in our lives. We pray that you destroy idols in our communities. We ask that you protect the people in, in the church. We ask that you open the spiritual eyes and ears of your people to see and hear what the Holy Spirit is saying. We pray for souls to be born again, baptized, healed, and delivered. Lord, help us to fast and pray. Lord, change the minds of men to line up with your word, your will, your ways. Lord, help us to go to the high places. Help us to rend, uh, um, take over those territories that were once uh, uh, people in there that were not holy. Father, please forgive us. And I repent as, as an apostle. Sometimes we have to repent for other people's sin. God, I repent for uh, the apostles that were not holy. Uh, in the land, and I ask, I ask for your mercy and that your judgment uh, um, uh, be a, a mercy for your people, that you would raise up the end time army to win the loss for Christ. I pray that your judgment turn, turn things into uh, soul winning, God. Take those very people that would be judged and go to hell and, and make them soul winners for your glory. I thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. We pray for souls to become born again, baptized, healed, and delivered. God, I ask that you help us to fast and pray. Lord, change the minds of men to line up with your word, your will, your ways. Lord, help us to go to the high places. Help us to set the captives free. Lord, help us to proclaim and declare revival in this city. This city, this state, this nation, and all nations, God, we, we ask you to do those things for us. God, we declare that the Twin Cities, Minnesota, and the United States will not tarry from repentance, and we will have a great move of God where people lay down their own agendas and pick up their crosses for Christ. Lord, we ask that you set and deliver drug addicts, alcoholics, and those addicted to porn, sex, gambling, and those in the, the occult. Lord, protect the airways and, and supernaturally clean the things we can't do. Lord, protect the waterways and supernaturally clean the things that we can't do. God, reveal the hidden agendas. God, reveal the hidden things to those who can make it, the changes needed. God, we ask for you to release your love to a loveless bride. God, we ask that you hold accountable those who are coming against your apostles and prophets. Koyumbala kishinere kiaka, kilaka, kilaka, kilaka. Praying the scriptures. I'm going to pray some scriptures, as, and, and I've got this listed as part of the intercessor prayer points. Tear down wickedness and dead works. Build up strong fortresses in the kingdom of God. 
God help us to know when to plant and to pluck that which is planted. God help us to know when to kill, heal, break down, and build up. God help us to know when to weep, laugh, mourn, and dance. God help us to know when to cast away stones, gather stones, embrace, and refrain from embracing. God help us to know get, loose, keep, and cast away. God help us to know rend, sow, keep silent, and to speak. God help us to know love, hate, war, and keep peace. Um, Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 8 says, To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. God help us to know when, when the seasons change. Uh, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. God give us wisdom. A, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up. God help us not to kill the innocent. Help us never to kill the innocent or uh, help us not to kill your, our mankind in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, Father, just help us to only know when to kill the, the uh, animals. I don't know what, what that means fully, but a time to heal. I do know what that means, and a lot of us need healing. A time to break down, a time to build up. God, help us to know and give us wisdom. Uh, a, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up. Verse 4, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. Verse 5, a time to cast away stones, a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing. I'm just going to read this uh, again. Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 8 says, verse 1, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. Verse 2, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. Verse 3, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up. Verse 4, a time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance. Verse 5, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing. Verse 6, a time to get and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away. Verse 7, a time to rend and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak. Verse 8, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. God, uproot anything you have not planted in our lives, our relationships, our cities, our states, our nations, our nation and all nations. Your word says, Be he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be uprooted. I thank you, Father, for your word. Koyomba la kishine de kieka, koyomba kishine de kieka, kilaka, kilaka, kilaka. Koyomba la kishine de kieka, kilaka, kilaka, kilaka. Lokomba kishine de kieka, koyomba la kishine de kieka, kilaka, kilaka, kilaka. Koyomba kishine de kieka, kilaka, kilaka, kilaka. Lokomba kishine de kieka, 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 kieka. Lokomba kishine de kieka. Ah, God, lay the axe to the root of things that need to be taken down in our lives, this city, this state, this nation, and all nations. Bring forth fruits worthy of repentance and begin not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father, for I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham, and now also the axe is laid up unto the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire, Luke 3, 8, and 9. Koyomba la kishine de kia ka. Kila ka yomba kishine de kia. God, don't let the enemy into our lives, jobs, schools, government, nation, church, or God-given plans. Your word says the gates of hell shall not prevail against the kingdom of God. We bind evil agendas and e evil plans and ask that you destroy them. We loose your truth and ask that you release your divine agendas and bring order into our lives, jobs, cities, schools, governments, nations, all nations, and the church. I have some other scriptures here, but as I'm closing, I'm just going to read a couple more prayers. God, we pray that you help us to repent, help the nation, help the people of this nation and all nations to repent. I'm going to give you some more scriptures if you're writing them down. Matthew 16, 18 through 19. Matthew 4, 17. Uh, Acts 3, 19. God, purge us of garbage and junk that does not help us prosper. Uh, Psalm 51, 7, Ezekiel 43, 26, John 15, 2. Purge out therefore old leaven, that ye may be a lump, new lump, as ye are leavened. 
for even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us, 1 Corinthians 5, 7. Um, 2 Timothy 2, 21 and 22. Uh, Hebrews 9, 14. Uh, God, we pray your will be done in our prayers if we prayed anything out of line with your perfect will, that you realign our prayers with your perfect will. God, we pray for the peace in Israel and in Jerusalem and also in our lives, our families' lives, our friends' lives, our loved ones' lives, and our enemies' lives. God, help us to know who we are in Christ and although we never take the armor of God off, help us to remember to put it on as a reminder that we are in a spiritual war but protected by you. God, help us to all submit unto righteous, the righteousness of God. God, help us to speak the truth, your word, to love to people, even if it means they might be offended. God, thank you for your promises and the word of God. Thank you for hearing our prayers, for answering our prayers. Ephesians 4, 11 through 16 uh, talks about um, uh, speaking the truth in love. Uh, Matthew 18, 19, and 20 Help us to be soul winners. That's Proverbs 11:30. 30. Uh, the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. I thank you, Father, uh, in Jesus' name for this opportunity. I know you're directing me uh, already for, uh, uh, the, the Holy Spirit's directing me already for uh, part three of this. He wants me to take you to the cross, the cross that's in my front yard, uh, where I turned a disappointment into an appointment for something good. I had, did not have the $1,500 to, to take a tree down that needed to come down. A limb fell down and uh, across, a big, huge limb uh, fell down in that 50-foot tree now uh, at the base of that tree. I did not have it, uh, uh, the root taken out. Uh, God gave me the idea and the vision to uh, put a cross in there, and now it stands a cross in my front yard. That's the part that that's going into part three. Uh, just here's a, a few more scriptures. God, thank you for your promises in the Word of God. Thank you for hearing our prayers and for answering our prayers. I think I already did that one. God, help us to preach the Word of God. Uh, 2 Timothy 4, 1 through 5, Mark 16, 15, Matthew 4, 23, uh, and Isaiah 61, 1 through 3. I'll just read one of these, Mark 16, 15, and in closing, I will read that, and it says, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. Koyombala kishinetikieka, koyombala kishinetiki, every, every uh, Jehovah Witness and uh, Muslim that has heard those prayers. Good. Come to the fountain of God.